FIFA, Wikipedia Audio International Olympic Committee The Federation Internationale de Football Association is an association which describes itself as an international governing body of association football, futsal, and beach soccer. FIFA is responsible for the organization of football's major international tournaments, notably the World Cup which commenced in 1930 and the Women's World Cup which commenced in 1991. FIFA was founded in 1904 to oversee international competition among the national associations of Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. Headquartered in Zurich, its membership now comprises 211 national associations. Member countries must each also be members of one of the six regional confederations into which the world is divided, Africa, Asia, Europe, North and Central America and the Caribbean, Oceania and South America. History Although FIFA does not control the rules of football, it is responsible for both the organization of a number of tournaments and their promotion, which generate revenue from sponsorship. In 2013, FIFA had revenues of over 1.3 billion US dollars, for a net profit of 72 million, and had cash reserves of over 1.4 billion US dollars. Reports by investigative journalists have linked FIFA leadership with corruption, bribery, and vote rigging related to the election of FIFA President Sepp Blatter and the organization's decision to award the 2018 and 2022 World Cups to Russia and Qatar, respectively. These allegations led to the indictments of nine high-ranking FIFA officials and five corporate executives by the U.S. Department of Justice on charges including racketeering, wire fraud, and money laundering. On May 27, 2015, several of these officials were arrested by Swiss authorities who were launching a simultaneous but separate criminal investigation into how the organization awarded the 2018 and 2022 World Cups. Those among these officials who were also indicted in the U.S. are expected to be extradited to face charges there as well. Many officials were suspended by FIFA's Ethics Committee including Sepp Blatter and Michel Platini. In early 2017 reports became public about FIFA President Johnny Infantino attempting to prevent the re-elections of both chairman of the Ethics Committee, Cornel Borbley and Hans Joachim Eckert, during the FIFA Congress in May 2017. On May 9, 2017, following Infantino's proposal, FIFA Council decided not to renew the mandates of Borbley and Eckert. Together with the chairman, 11 of 13 committee members were removed. The need for a single body to oversee association football became apparent at the beginning of the 20th century with the increasing popularity of international fixtures. The Fédération Internationale de Football Association was founded in the rear of the headquarters of the Union des Sociétés Françaises de Sports Athletics at the Rue Saint-Honor 229 in Paris on May 21, 1904. The French name and acronym are used even outside French-speaking countries. The founding members were the National Associations of Belgium, Denmark, France, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. Also, that same day, the German Association declared its intention of affiliating through a telegram. The first president of FIFA was Robert Guerin. Guerin was replaced in 1906 by Daniel Burley Woolfall from England by then a member of the association. The first tournament FIFA staged, the association football competition for the 1908 Olympics in London was more successful than its Olympic predecessors, 
despite the presence of professional footballers, contrary to the founding principles of FIFA. Membership of FIFA expanded beyond Europe with the application of South Africa in 1909, Argentina in 1912, Canada and Chile in 1913, and the United States in 1914. During World War I, with many players sent off to war and the possibility of travel for international fixtures severely limited, the organization's survival was in doubt. Post-war, following the death of Wolf Fall, the organization was run by Dutchman Carl Hirschman. It was saved from extinction but at the cost of the withdrawal of the home nations, who cited an unwillingness to participate in international competitions with their recent World War enemies. The home nations later resumed their membership. The FIFA collection is held by the National Football Museum at Urbis in Manchester, England. The first World Cup was held in 1930 in Montevideo, Uruguay. FIFA is headquartered in Zurich, and is an association established under the law of Switzerland. FIFA's supreme body is the FIFA Congress, an assembly made up of representatives from each affiliated member association. Each national football association has one vote regardless of its size or footballing strength. The Congress assembles in ordinary session once every year, and extraordinary sessions have been held once a year since 1998. The Congress makes decisions relating to FIFA's governing statutes and their method of implementation and application. Only the Congress can pass changes to FIFA's statutes. The Congress approves the annual report, and decides on the acceptance of new national associations and holds elections. Congress elects the President of FIFA, its General Secretary, and the other members of the FIFA Council on the year following the FIFA World Cup. Structure FIFA's Executive Committee, chaired by the President, is the main decision-making body of the organization in the intervals of Congress. The Executive Committee is composed of 25 people, the President, 8 Vice Presidents, and 15 members and one woman member. The Executive Committee is the body that decides which country will host the World Cup. The President and General Secretary are the main office holders of FIFA and are in charge of its daily administration, carried out by the General Secretariat, with its staff of approximately 280 members. Johnny Infantino is the current president, elected on February 26, 2016 at the Extraordinary FIFA Congress. The former president, Sepp Blatter is suspended pending a corruption investigation. FIFA's worldwide organizational structure also consists of several other bodies, under the authority of the Executive Committee or created by Congress as standing committees. Among those bodies are the FIFA Emergency Committee, the FIFA Ethics Committee, the Finance Committee, the Disciplinary Committee, and the Referees Committee. The FIFA Emergency Committee deals with all matters requiring immediate settlement in the time frame between the regular meetings of the FIFA Executive Committee. The Emergency Committee consists of the FIFA President as well as one member from each confederation. Emergency Committee decisions made are immediately put into legal effect, although they need to be ratified at the next Executive Committee meeting. FIFA publishes its results according to IFRS. The total compensation for the management committee in 2011 was 30 million for 35 people. Blatter, the only full-time person on the committee, earned approximately 2 million Swiss francs, 1.2 million in salary and the rest in bonuses. 
A report in London's Sunday Times in June 2014 said the members of the committee had their salaries doubled from $100,000 to $200,000 during the year. The report also said leaked documents had indicated $4.4 million in secret bonuses had been paid to the committee members following the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. Besides its worldwide institutions there are six confederations recognized by FIFA which oversee the game in the different continents and regions of the world. National associations, and not the continental confederations, are members of FIFA. The continental confederations are provided for in FIFA's statutes, and membership of a confederation is a prerequisite to FIFA membership. In total, FIFA recognizes 211 national associations and their associated men's national teams as well as 129 women's national teams, see the list of national football teams and their respective country codes. FIFA has more member states than the UN as FIFA recognizes 23 non-sovereign entities as distinct nations such as the four home nations within the United Kingdom and politically disputed territories such as Palestine. The FIFA Working Committee of Small Nations has categorized potential FIFA members into three categories. Laws and Governance Administrative Cost the FIFA World Rankings are updated monthly and rank each team based on their performance in international competitions, qualifiers, and friendly matches. There is also a World Ranking for Women's Football, updated four times a year. Six Confederations and 211 National Associations Recognitions and Awards Governance and Game Development Discipline of National Associations Video Replay FIFA holds an annual awards ceremony which recognizes both individual and team achievements in international association football. Individually, the top men's player is awarded the FIFA Ballon d'Or and the top women's player is named FIFA World Player of the Year. The latter title was also awarded to the men's player prior to its 2010 merger with France Football's Ballon d'Or. At the Ballon d'Or banquet, the FIFA Puskas Award, FIFA slash FIF Pro Best 11, FIFA Fair Play Award, and FIFA Presidential Award are also awarded. In 1994 FIFA published the FIFA World Cup All-Time Team. In 2000 FIFA published the results of an internet poll, declaring Real Madrid to be the FIFA club of the century. In 2002 FIFA announced the FIFA Dream Team, an all-time all-star team chosen by fans in a poll. As part of its centennial celebrations in 2004, FIFA organized a match of the century between France and Brazil. Anthem The laws that govern football, known officially as the laws of the game, are not solely the responsibility of FIFA, they are maintained by a body called the International Football Association Board. FIFA has members on its board, the other four are provided by the football associations of the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland who jointly established IFAB in 1882 and are recognized for the creation and history of the game. Changes to the laws of the game must be agreed by at least six of the eight delegates. The FIFA statutes form the overarching document guiding FIFA's governing system. The governing system is divided into separate bodies that have the appropriate powers to create a system of checks and balances. It consists of four general bodies, the Congress, the Executive Committee, the General Secretariat, and Standing and Ad Hoc Committees. 
FIFA frequently takes active roles in the running of the sport and developing the game around the world. One of its sanctions is to suspend teams and associated members from international competition when a government interferes in the running of FIFA's associate member organizations or if the associate is not functioning properly. A 2007 FIFA ruling that a player can be registered with a maximum of three clubs, and appear in official matches for a maximum of two, in a year measured from July 1 to June 30 has led to controversy, especially in those countries whose seasons cross that date barrier, as in the case of two former Ireland internationals. As a direct result of this controversy, FIFA modified this ruling the following year to accommodate transfers between leagues without of phase seasons. FIFA does not permit video evidence during matches although it is permitted for subsequent sanctions. The 1970 meeting of the International Football Association Board agreed to request the television authorities to refrain from any slow-motion playback which reflected, or might reflect, adversely on any decision of the referee. In 2008, FIFA President Sepp Blatter said, let it be as it is and let's leave with errors. The television companies will have the right to say was right or wrong, but still the referee makes the decision a man, not a machine. It has been said that instant replay is needed given the difficulty of tracking the activities of 22 players on such a large field, and it has been proposed that instant replay be used in penalty incidents fouls which lead to bookings or red cards, and whether the ball has crossed the goal line since those events are more likely than others to be game-changing. Critics point out that instant replay is already in use in other sports, including rugby union, cricket, American football, Canadian football, basketball, baseball, tennis, and ice hockey. As one notable proponent of video replay, Portuguese coach Carlos Quiras has been quoted as saying that the credibility of the game is at stake. Sponsors An incident during a second-round game in the 2010 FIFA World Cup between England and Germany, where a shot by Englishman Frank Lampard, which would have leveled the scores at 2-2 in a match that ultimately ended in a 4-1 German victory crossed the line but was not seen to do so by the match officials, led FIFA officials to declare that they will re-examine the use of goal line technology. Since the 1994 FIFA World Cup, like the UEFA Champions League, FIFA has adopted an anthem composed by the German composer Franz Lambert. It has been recently rearranged and produced by Rob May and Simon Hill. The FIFA anthem is played at the beginning of official FIFA-sanctioned matches and tournaments such as international friendlies, the FIFA World Cup, FIFA Women's World Cup, FIFA U20 World Cup, FIFA U17 World Cup, football at the Summer Olympics, FIFA U20 Women's World Cup, FIFA Women's U17 World Cup, FIFA Futsal World Cup. FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup and FIFA Club World Cup Corruption and Legislative Interference Since 2007, FIFA has also required most of its broadcast partners to use short sequences including the anthem at the beginning and end of FIFA event coverage, as well as for break bumpers, to help promote FIFA's sponsors. This emulates practices long used by some other international football events such as the UEFA Champions League. Exceptions may be made for specific events, for example, an original piece of African music was used for bumpers during the 2010 FIFA World Cup. In May 2006 British investigative reporter Andrew Jennings' book Foul. The Secret World of FIFA, Bribes, 
vote rigging and ticket scandals caused controversy within the football world by detailing an alleged international cash for contracts scandal following the collapse of FIFA's marketing partner International Sport and Leisure, and revealed how some football officials have been urged to secretly repay the sweeteners they received. The book also alleged that vote rigging had occurred in the fight for Sepp Blatter's continued control of FIFA. Guilty pleas Indictments and arrests 2018 and 2022 World Cup bids Shortly after the release of Foul A BBC television exposed by Jennings and BBC producer Roger Cork for the BBC news programme Panorama was broadcast. In this hour-long programme, Screened on June 11, 2006, Jennings and the Panorama team agree that Sepp Blatter was being investigated by Swiss police over his role in a secret deal to repay more than £1 million worth of bribes pocketed by football officials. Lord Triesman, the former chairman of the English Football Association, described FIFA as an organisation that behaves like a mafia family highlighting the association's decades-long traditions of bribes, bungs and corruption. All testimonies offered in the Panorama Expose were provided through a disguised voice, appearance, or both, save one, Mel Brennan, formerly a lecturer at Towson University in the United States, became the first high-level football insider to go public with substantial allegations of greed, corruption, nonfeasance, and malfeasance by CONCACAF and FIFA leadership. During the Panorama Expose, Brennan the highest-level African-American in the history of world football governance joined Jennings, Trinita Dian journalist Lysena Liburd and many others in exposing allegedly inappropriate allocations of money at CONCACAF, and drew connections between ostensible CONCACAF criminality and similar behaviors at FIFA. Since then, and in the light of fresh allegations of bribery and corruption and opaque action by FIFA in late 2010, both Jennings and Brennan remain highly critical of FIFA with Brennan calling directly for an alternative to FIFA to be considered by the stakeholders of the sport throughout the world. In a further Panorama documentary broadcast on BBC One on November 29, 2010, Jennings alleged that three senior FIFA officials, Nicholas Liaz, Issa Hayatu, and Ricardo Teixeira, had been paid huge bribes by FIFA's marketing partner ISL between 1989 and 1999, which FIFA had failed to investigate. He claimed they appeared on a list of 175 bribes paid by ISL, totaling about $100 million. A former ISL executive said that there were suspicions within ISL that the company was only awarded the marketing contract for successive World Cups by paying bribes to FIFA officials. The program also alleged that another current official, Jack Warner, has been repeatedly involved in reselling World Cup tickets to touts. Sepp Blatter said that FIFA had not investigated the allegation because it had not been told about it via official channels. The program also criticized FIFA for allegedly requiring World Cup host bidding nations to agree to implement special laws for the World Cup, including a blanket tax exemption for FIFA and sponsors, and limitation of workers' rights. It alleged that governments of bidding nations are required to keep the details of the required laws confidential during the bidding process, but that they were revealed by the Dutch government, which refused to agree to them, as a result of which it was told by FIFA that its bid could be adversely affected. According to the program, following Jennings' earlier investigations he was banned from all FIFA press conferences for reasons he says have not been made clear, and the accused officials failed to answer questions about his latest allegations, either verbally or by letter. British Prime Minister David Cameron and Andy Anson, 
head of England's World Cup bid, criticised the timing of the broadcast, three days before FIFA's decision on the host for the 2018 FIFA World Cup, on the grounds that it might damage England's bid. The voters included officials accused by the program. In June 2011, it came to light that the IOC had started inquiry proceedings against FIFA Honorary President Jao Havlang into claims of bribery. The BBC Panorama program alleged that the Brazilian accepted a $1 million bung in 1997 from ISL. The Olympic governing body said the IOC takes all allegations of corruption very seriously and we would always ask for any evidence of wrongdoing involving any IOC members to be passed to our ethics commission. In a 2014 interview, American sports writer Dave Zirin said greed, corruption, nonfeasance and malfeasance are endemic to FIFA leadership and that FIFA should be abolished for the good of the game. He said that currently, FIFA is in charge of both monitoring corruption in football matches, and marketing and selling the sport, but that two separate organizational bodies are needed, an organizational body that monitors corruption and match-fixing and the like and an organization that's responsible for marketing and sponsorships and selling the sport. Zirin said the idea of having a single organization that's responsible for both seems highly ineffective and detrimental to the sport. Between 2013 and 2015 four individuals, and two sports television rights corporations pleaded guilty to United States financial misconduct charges. The pleas of Chuck Blazer, Jose Hala, Duryan Warner, Daryl Warner, Traffic Group, and Traffic Sports USA were unsealed in May 2015. In another 2015 case, Singapore also imposed a six-year harshest sentence ever received for match-fixing on match-fixer Eric Ding who had bribed three Lebanese FIFA football officials with prostitutes as an inducement to fix future matches that they would officiate, as well as perverting the course of justice. Fourteen FIFA officials and marketing executives were indicted by the United States Department of Justice in May 2015. The officials were arrested in Switzerland and are in the process of extradition to the U.S. Specific charges include wire fraud, racketeering, and money laundering. Swiss authorities say they have also opened a separate criminal investigation into FIFA's operations pertaining to the 2018 and 2022 World Cup bids. FIFA's top officials were arrested at a hotel in Switzerland on suspicion of receiving bribes totaling $100 million. The U.S. Department of Justice stated that nine FIFA officials and four executives of sports management companies were arrested and accused of over $150 million in bribes. The U.K. Shadow Home Secretary and Labour Member of Parliament, Andy Burnham, stated in May 2015 that England should boycott the 2018 World Cup against corruption in FIFA and military aggression by Russia. FIFA's choice to award the 2018 World Cup to Russia and the 2022 World Cup to Qatar has been widely criticized by media. It has been alleged that some FIFA inside sources insist that the Russian kickbacks of cash and gifts given to FIFA executive members were enough to secure the Russian 2018 bid weeks before the result was announced. Sepp Blatter was widely criticized in the media for giving a warning about the evils of the media in a speech to FIFA executive committee members shortly before they voted on the hosting of the 2018 World Cup a reference to the Sunday Times exposes and the Panorama investigation. Two members of FIFA's executive committee were banned from all football-related activity in November 2010 for allegedly offering to sell their votes to undercover newspaper reporters. In early May 2011, 
a British parliamentary inquiry into why England failed to secure the 2018 finals was told by Member of Parliament, Damien Collins, that there was evidence from the Sunday Times newspaper that Issa Hayatu of Cameroon and Jacques Anuma of Ivory Coast were paid by Qatar. Qatar has categorically denied the allegations, as have Hayatu and Anuma. FIFA President Blatter said, as of May 23, 2011, that the British newspaper The Sunday Times has agreed to bring its whistleblowing source to meet senior FIFA officials, who will decide whether to order a new investigation into alleged World Cup bidding corruption. Are happy, they agreed that they will bring this whistleblower here to Zurich and then we will have a discussion, an investigation of this. Blatter said. Specifically, the whistleblower claims that FIFA Executive Committee members Issa Hayatu and Jacques Anuma were paid $1.5 million to vote for Qatar. The Emirates bid beat the United States in a final round of voting last December. Blatter did not rule out reopening the 2022 vote if corruption could be proved, but urged taking the matter step by step. The FIFA president said his organization is anxiously awaiting more evidence before asking its ethics committee to examine allegations made in Britain's parliament in early May 2011. Hayatu, who is from Cameroon, leads the Confederation of African Football and is a FIFA vice president. Anuma is president of Ivorian Football Federation. The whistleblower said Qatar agreed to pay a third African voter, Amos Adamu, for his support. The Nigerian was later suspended from voting after a FIFA ethics court ruled he solicited bribes from undercover Sunday Times reporters posing as lobbyists. Blatter said the newspaper and its whistleblower would meet with FIFA Secretary General, Jerome Valk, and legal director. Marco Villager. Allegations against FIFA officials have also been made to the UK Parliament by David Triesman, the former head of England's bid and the English Football Association. Triesman told the lawmakers that four long standing FIFA Executive Committee members Jack Warner, Nicholas Lias, Ricardo Tixera, and Warei Makudi engaged in improper and unethical conduct in the 2018 bidding, which was won by Russia. All six FIFA voters have denied wrongdoing. On September 28, 2015, Sepp Blatter suggested that the 2018 World Cup being awarded to Russia was planned before the voting, and that the 2022 World Cup would have then been awarded to the United States. However, this plan changed after the election ballot, and the 2022 World Cup was awarded to Qatar instead of the US. FIFA announced on May 25, 2011 that it had opened the investigation to examine the conduct of four officials Mohammed bin Hammam and Jack Warner, along with Caribbean football union officials Debbie Mingwell and Jason Sylvester in relation to claims made by executive committee member, Chuck Blazer. Blazer, who is the general secretary of the CONCACAF Federation, has alleged that violations were committed under the FIFA Code of Ethics during a meeting organized by Bin Hammam and Warner on 10 and 11 May the same time Lord Triesman had accused Warner of demanding money for a World Cup 2018 vote in relation to the 2011 FIFA presidential election, in which Bin Hammam, who also played a key role in the Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup bid, allegedly offered financial incentives for votes cast in his favor during the presidential election. As a result of the investigation both Bin Hammam and Warner were suspended. Warner reacted to his suspension by questioning Blatter's conduct and adding that FIFA Secretary General, Jerome Valk, had told him via email that Qatar had bought the 2022 World Cup.
Valk subsequently issued a statement denying he had suggested it was bribery, saying instead that the country had used its financial muscle to lobby for support. Qatar officials denied any impropriety. Bin Hammam also responded by writing to FIFA, protesting unfair treatment in suspension by the FIFA Ethics Committee and FIFA administration. Further evidence emerged of alleged corruption. On May 30, 2011, Fred Lunn, vice president of the Bahamas Football Association, said that he was given $40,000 in cash as an incitement to vote for FIFA presidential candidate, Mohammed bin Hammam. In addition, on June 11, 2011 Louis Giscos, president of the Surinamese Football Association, alleged that he was given $40,000 in cash for development projects as an incentive to vote for Bin Hammam. After being re-elected as president of FIFA Sepp Blatter responded to the allegations by promising to reform FIFA in wake of the bribery scandal, with Danny Jordan, CEO of the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa, saying there is great expectation for reform. Former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger is being tipped for a role on the newly proposed Solutions Committee, and former Netherlands national football team player Johan Cruyff is also being linked with a role. UEFA Secretary General Johnny Infantino said he hopes for concrete measures to be taken by the World Games Authority saying that the UEFA Executive Committee has taken note of the will of FIFA to take concrete and effective measures for good governance, following the situation closely. IOC President Jacques Rog commented on the situation by saying that he believes FIFA can emerge stronger from its worst ever crisis, stating that I will not point a finger in lecture. I am sure FIFA can emerge stronger and from within. Several of FIFA's partners and sponsors have raised concerns about the allegations of corruption, including Coca-Cola, Adidas, Emirates, and Visa. Coca-Cola raised concerns by saying the current allegations being raised are distressing and bad for the sport, with Adidas saying the negative tenor of the public debate around FIFA at the moment is neither good for football nor for FIFA and its partners. Moreover Emirates raised its concerns by saying we hope that these issues will be resolved as soon as possible, and Visa adding the current situation is clearly not good for the game and we ask that FIFA take all necessary steps to resolve the concerns that have been raised. Australian Sports Minister Mark Arbib said it was clear FIFA needed to change, saying there is no doubt there needs to be reform of FIFA. This is something that we're hearing worldwide, with Australian Senator Nick Xenophon accusing FIFA of scamming the country out of the $46 million it spent on the Australia 2022 FIFA World Cup bid, saying that until the investigation into FIFA has been completed, Australia must hold off spending any more taxpayers' money on any future World Cup bids. Theo Zwanziger President of the German Football Association, also called on FIFA to re-examine the awarding of the 2022 FIFA World Cup to Qatar. Transparency International, which had called on FIFA to postpone the election pending a full independent investigation, renewed its call on FIFA to change its governance structure. Moreover, Former Argentine football player Diego Maradona was critical of FIFA in light of the corruption scandal, comparing members of the board to dinosaurs. He said FIFA is a big museum. They are dinosaurs who do not want to relinquish power. It's always going to be the same. In October 2011, Dick Pound criticized the organization, saying, FIFA has fallen far short of a credible demonstration that it recognizes the many problems it faces, that it has the will to solve them, 
that it is willing to be transparent about what it is doing and what it finds, and that its conduct in the future will be such that the public can be confident in the governance of the sport. 2011 FIFA Presidential Election Response to Allegations FIFA Structured Tournaments Men's Tournaments Women's Tournaments Other Tournaments Current Title Holders